Hey fiddlers, welcome to today's fiddle video. Today we're going to be talking about how to sound more like a fiddler if you come from a classical background. Maybe you are a classical player, you've been wanting to get into fiddling, so today we're gonna get into some of the ways that you might fiddleify your playing. As someone who took classical violin for years and sort of moonlighted as a fiddler, I have given some thought to the differences here, and these are just some of my musings. I play primarily Celtic music, so that's the perspective I'm gonna be coming from, and we're gonna be focusing today on jigs, but there is a distinct possibility that we will do a real video in the future. If you'd like sheet music and practice tracks for the tune that I'm gonna be using to demonstrate these ideas, it's called Palm Sunday, and you can find a link for that in the description. Here's how a classical player might play the jig that we're gonna be talking about today. And here's how a fiddler might play the same jig. All right, there are a few things going on there. Let's talk first about bowing patterns. With fiddle tunes, very often we are given a tune or we learn a tune with no bowing patterns. Nobody tells us what notes we're gonna slur together. But that can actually make a really big difference in terms of the feel of the tune. Tunes don't often have a set bowing pattern and a different fiddler would play the same tune with completely different bowings. So we have to figure out which bowings are we gonna use. It can help to have in mind a few bowing patterns that you might encounter a lot in fiddling. For jigs there are a few slurring patterns that I tend to draw on and then I mix and match those throughout the tune. You could do all separate bows. You could do slurs for each beat, so each set of three eighth notes or maybe it's a quarter and an eighth note, so something like this. In a set of three eighth notes you could do a down bow and then an up bow for the next two. You could also slur across the beat. So that means in a set of six eighth notes, you could slur from the third to the fourth. One, two, three, options, but you can draw on those and mix them up in the tune, so not getting too patterny about it. If you decided to do one bow for each beat, that might start to sound a little too patterny for fiddling. As opposed to... Another thing to think about is the basic rhythm of different types of tunes. You wanna be a little careful to not get too extreme about this, but in jigs, in fiddling, you may encounter a little bit of a dotted rhythm. Instead of the notes being completely even, you might wanna give just the slightest more time to the first note in a set of three. It can be very subtle, but it can make a difference. Another thing to think about is ornamentation. In Irish and Scottish fiddling, you'll encounter a whole bunch of these little ornaments that might sound something like this. So instead of playing the tune like this, you might go like this. Or you might go like this. 
or even It takes a little getting used to to add ornaments to tunes and sometimes I think muscle memory can be kind of helpful just practicing them really slowly and then gradually getting a little faster. But here are a few basic ornaments. If you want to play that's just a little second finger grace note going right before the third finger note. You might call that a hammer on. Or you could do a waterfall where you play And that is when you're going from a note to a lower note, you're gonna throw two little grace notes in between that. You're gonna play three, and then real quick, four, three, one. That's one example of a waterfall. And one that you encounter an awful lot in Irish playing is the roll. This is a five note thing. So you're starting with your principal note, which is your third finger here and then you play a note above, then the note that you started with, then the note below, then the note you started with again. Those are just a few ornaments to get you started, but there are a whole bunch out there. Another thing you might want to do in fiddling is use open strings instead of a fourth finger. Instead of this, you could go like this. Yet another thing you might want to be aware of is staying away from too much vibrato. And I know people might get on my case because I use vibrato in fiddling upon occasion kind of maybe a little bit of a lot of the time. But really, vibrato might be used sparingly or not at all in a fiddle tune. So rather than maybe try Vibrato can be a little automatic for some folks, and I understand that and empathize with that. But if you practice taking it out of your playing, you might find that you actually like the sound of the pure note without that wiggliness, which can be beautiful. Another thing you may often find in a fiddle tune is double stops. Obviously you find double stops in classical music as well, but again, in fiddling, you kind of have to figure out where you're gonna put them, when you're gonna use them. So instead of you might go you might not necessarily want them all over the place but you can stick them in there here and there just for effect even if it's just an open string below the melody as long as that sounds good. One last thing that I would say is not necessarily a general rule, but you want to look out for it, is using too much bow. This applies particularly in jigs and reels, particularly when you're playing them fast. So let's say we're playing this tune at a faster tempo. Instead of... We might aim for... All right, fiddlers and violinists, that wraps up today's video. Again, today we were just covering jigs, and there's a whole other realm of reels, there are polkas, all kinds of good stuff, so maybe those can be covered in a future video. If you'd like sheet music and practice tracks for the tune that I used to demonstrate these ideas today, it is called Palm Sunday, and you will find a link in the description. The sheet music won't include every detail we went over today, but some of them. Happy fiddling, and I'll see you soon.